Yeah, Macros is one of my favorites. This one is an interactive version of a very classic tool that was the foundation of Hard Ops, finally remade for the 2.8 generation. If we look at this tooltip, we see that left mouse clicking will grate things, control clicking will neural, shift clicking will turn a edge into a panel, and alt click will turn a panel into a face, while control shift clicking will turn a panel into a face as well. So it looks like there's actually multiple ways to turn a panel into a face, depending on if you're using emulate numpad or not. So to show this in action, we'll press three and go into face mode. And what I'll want to do is inset this and we'll just um, you know right click subdivide. Actually, we don't even have to subdivide. We could just press Q and just click EM macro and we're just automatically in this mode of face grate where rolling the wheel will allow us to adjust the amount of face grating that we do on the fly and holding control will allow us to control the distance and size of the grates that are being generated at this time. And whenever you click to apply, that is it. You've just generated some face grates. So a quick way to create some instantaneous detail in a centralized area. So we'll go with this top face and we'll inset this as well. And we're insetting it because we want to maintain a quad flow for feeding this thing. Because if you feed it in guns, it won't actually do anything. It does require a quad face in order to perform the operation. So the easiest way to show it in this demo is to inset each face. So we'll press Q and we see that the next one is control clicking. So by control clicking, we can just move the mouse in order to dig in how far we want with our neural. We can also point it outwards, which is a difference between this one and the last one. And you can also hold control to choose how big you actually want the neural to be. So this is one of my favorite ways to just quickly add neural detail into a surface by just rolling the wheel and choosing how much I want. The next one we want to talk about is going to be basically shift clicking this to do a panel edge. So whenever we shift click this, notice that the first thing we're able to do is adjust the depth of it, but holding control will allow us to control how much that we're closing in on this thing. And these tools can be very interesting when used in some of these edit mode scenarios. In fact, I'm a big fan of just getting in here and just creating shapes and utilizing them to basically create flows like I did just now using the knife and then shift clicking EM macro in order to shrink things in and just push that to kind of legitimize it with the surface and then grabbing what's just been created and beveling it in order to give it a form of integration. So that is basically edge panel in a nutshell. So the ne next but last but not least is panel face. So this one can be triggered with alt clicking because I'm not messing with emulate numpad. And when we click this one, all it does is basically a type of extrude. But by holding control, we can also adjust boundary loops in case we're trying to protect the perimeter as well. And just by bringing them in, we can actually remove that aspect of things. So in this case, it doesn't actually show much of a result, which doesn't um, garner interest, right? But let's set this up with some more interest in its scenario. So we'll take a cube and bring it in and we'll just bevel one side and grab this and we'll perform a knife under booleans as well. And with this area selected, we are just going to just alt click in order to push this area out, just resulting in just kind of a uh, different shape in this particular area that we can then come back and play off of, of course, using bevels to further help integrate it into this area that we've connected it with. So EM macro is something that does require a degree of creativity when it comes to getting started with and utilizing it to its fullest. But once you get started with it, it is one of those tools that I found myself unable to live without, and I'm glad to see it updated for this new 2.8 generation.